Hi, it's Dr. Z. I will be discussing personality theories today. By the end of this video, you'll be able to describe three of the four theories of personality. Please feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. Personality involves an individual's characteristic pattern of behaving, thinking, and feeling. There are four main approaches or theories to personality. Psychoanalytic, humanistic, social cognitive, and trait theories. This video will, will review three of the four theories. The first approach to personality involves humanistic theories. Humanistic theories incorporate the ideas of humanistic psychology, that people are innately good, unique, and capable of choice. Can you recall the two most well-known humanistic psychologists? If you guess Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, you're right. In this section, we will discuss two specific theories. First, the theory of self-actualization is based on the work of Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs. Recall that the hierarchy focuses on needs that we are motivated to meet to reach self-actualization. In the Lego movie, Emmett needs to believe that he is special on his own. Thus, personality is based on motivational factors and developing to one's fullest potential. When it comes to personality outcomes, there are two options. To have a healthy personality, an individual is continually striving to become all that he or she can be. They are motivated to push through challenges and work toward self-actualization. In the Lego Batman movie, Joker does not give up and continues to have new ideas on how to beat Batman. On the other hand, an unhealthy personality outcome can result when an individual fails to be motivated to meet their needs and become stagnated. In essence, these are those individuals who tend to give up and do not pursue their potential. Second, the theory of conditions of worth is based on the work of Carl Rogers and his concept of unconditional positive regard. He believed that unconditional positive regard or love, affection, and respect with no strings attached is necessary for people to be able to explore fully all that they can achieve and become. As such, personality is based on how parents set up conditions of worth for their child. In other words, a child will be loved only if they do what and how their parents say. There are conditions to a parent's love. This photo is of Lego Batman's parents before they passed away. Rogers also describes the concept of the real self and ideal self. The real self is one's actual perception of the characteristics and skills that contribute to their self-actualization. The ideal self, on the other hand, is the perceptions of what one should be or would like to be. The ideal self primarily comes from important and significant people in an individual's life, especially our parents when we're children. Bruce Wayne and his alter ego, Lego Batman can be considered an example of this concept. Now, for healthy personality, Rogers believe that when the real and ideal self are very close or similar to each other, people feel competent, people feel good and capable. When a person has a realistic view of the real self and the ideal self is actually attainable, there usually isn't a problem. Likewise, a person develops their own sense of worth that does not rely on others' perceptions or expectations. However, an unhealthy personality can arise if a person acts according to others' sense of worth and end up denying our true self. Additionally, when a person's view of their self is distorted or that an ideal self is impossible to attain, that is when problems arise in personality. When there's a mismatch between the real and the ideal, 
anxiety and neurotic behavior can result. Once again, how the important people in your life react can greatly impact the degree of agreement between the real and the ideal selves. The second approach to personality are social cognitive theories. These theories involve how personalities consist of learned behaviors acquired through social interaction. I will discuss one specific theory. Locus of control was developed by Julian Rotter. He described personality as being based on how people account for what happens in their lives. For example, did you perform badly on that exam because you did not study or because the instructor gave you a difficult exam? Locus refers to location. In other words, where is the location of your control? In the Lego movie, the character of the good cop, bad cop, appears to be having difficulties with control. Internal locus of control reflects that you are in control of your behavior and its consequences. So the control is inside of you. On the other hand, external locus of control reflects that whatever happens to you is in the hands of fate, luck, or chance. So the control is outside of you. When it comes to personality outcomes, individuals who tend to have an internal locus of control are more likely to have personality characteristics of high achievement motivation or the will to succeed in any attempted task. They also tend to develop strong work ethic and flexible thinking. On the other hand, individuals with an external locus of control are less likely to engage in helpful changes in behavior and have stiff thinking. In other words, they tend to give up too quickly and can fall into patterns of learned helplessness and depression. Lego Batman has a tendency to engage in stiff thinking and believes that no one else ever has good ideas besides him. The third approach to personality involves trait theories. Traits are personal qualities or characteristics that are stable across situations and are used to describe or explain personality. I will only discuss one modern trait theory. The five factor model is also referred to as the big five by McCray and Costa. They believe that personality is based on a continuum of five factors. The acronym of OCEAN is the best way to remember the five traits, such as in the scene of the Lego movie where they're floating in the ocean on the double decker couch. The first trait is openness. Are you eager to try new things and consider new ideas? Individuals who seek out varied experiences who are imaginative, imaginative and who are curious tend to be on one end of the continuum. On the opposite end are individuals who tend to be less open to new experiences, prefer to play it safe, and are less open-minded. The second trait is conscientiousness. Do you always fold your laundry before putting it away? Individuals high on conscientiousness tend to be detail-oriented, dependable, and reliable. At the other end, individuals may be perceived as lazy, unreliable, and tend to be more spontaneous. The third trait is extroversion. If you have a free evening, would you rather go to a party or stay in and watch a movie? Extroverts gain their energy from others and enjoy being around people. At the other end of the continuum, introverts gain energy from themselves and are most comfortable on their own. The fourth trait is agreeableness. Do people describe you as easygoing? Individuals high in agreeableness tend to be compassionate, open to helping others, and easygoing. Alternatively, individuals low in, ag in agreeableness tend to be seen as unfriendly, rude, perhaps even inconsiderate, and they can be, can be considered cold in personality. The fifth trait is neuroticism. 
Neuroticism refers to the tendency to be emotionally unstable. Specifically, an individual high in neuroticism tends to overreact or be overly dramatic to daily annoyances or just little things that most of us would take in stride. In summary, this video reviewed three of the four different approaches or theories of personality, humanistic, social cognitive, and trait theories. Each theory is valuable in understanding how we interact with the world around us. The photos used in this video are property of the above-mentioned films. Thank you.